Yo, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of The Swass. Uh, it is NFL Week 17. Uh, coming off a green week, I think I was plus uh, 1.05 units, I believe, uh, which means five of the last six NFL weeks have been green. Can't argue with that. Um, but let's move on to week 17. We got Jets on the road in Cleveland. The line is Cleveland minus seven and a half. Total sitting at 35. Actually, I think it's down at 34 and a half now. Welcome to the source. The source. Source. get the source so this line was at seven for most of this week and the public was definitely coming in on cleveland uh looks like the odds makers do eventually react to it jumped up to seven and a half i i think that was earlier this morning i'm recording this on wednesday night so i think that was earlier this morning uh now we're looking at seven and a half across the board and the action's looking even so no public side here looking at a 50 50 split let's talk injuries uh, Jets are going to be without Zach Wilson again. Aaron Rodgers still not back. So uh, we're going to see Trevor Simeon out there, quarterback again for the Jets. Uh, Connor, McGovern, uh, Connor McGovern also going to miss another game at center. On the defensive side, the Jets are completely good to go, though. Uh, no names on the injury report out of the Jets starting defensive unit. Cleveland's offense, uh, we got a situation here. Uh, so keep in mind, this Browns offensive line is already missing three offensive tackles. They aren't shown on this graphic because I believe they're all out for the season. Uh, so the offensive tackles listed as the starters on this graphic are the fourth and fifth offensive tackles on the depth chart. Now, four of the five starters on Cleveland's offensive line this week are listed as questionable. Uh, that being said, all four of these guys have been practicing. In fact, I don't think any of them missed a single practice. So I would imagine all four of these guys are going to play. Uh, same goes for Kareem Hunt. He's listed as questionable, and he did miss practice on Monday, but he was out there on Tuesday and Wednesday, so I think he's going to play as well. On the defensive side of the ball, uh, Cleveland's still missing Anthony Walker at linebacker. This will be the third straight game he's missed. Uh, good news, though. Looks like Juan Thornhill is going to be back on the field at safety. He's missed the last two games, and Cleveland needs him out there because Delpit's on the IR, so they're already thin at safety. Getting Thornhill back uh, on the field, which I believe he's going to play, uh, that's huge. So let's match these two teams up on the field, and we'll start with the Jets passing offense. And just wow. Just, just take a look at some of these numbers here. Uh, Trevor Simeon just had a terrible game at home against the Washington Commanders defense. 27 of 49, 217 yards, 4.4 yards per attempt, one touchdown and a pick, one touchdown and a pick, 64.8 passer rating. For reference, the Washington Commanders have the worst rated pass defense in the NFL. 32nd in DVOA, 32nd in opponent average passer rating allowed, and 31st in yards per pass attempt allowed. Trevor Simeon's passer rating against Washington was the lowest by an opposing quarterback against the Commanders all season, and there was Desmond Ritter and Mac Jones games in there, um, both clocking in at 66.5 each. Trevor Simeon outdid both of them. That was at home against the Washington Commanders defense. Now he's got to go on the road in Cleveland. And in case you've been living under a rock all year, it's probably the best pass defense. Well, probably the best overall defense in the NFL uh, on the season. Cleveland is second in pass defense DVOA. First in opponent passer rating allowed. Second in yards per pass attempt allowed. And things only get worse for Trevor Simeon when you look at the home away splits for the Browns pass defense. At home this year, the Cleveland Browns are allowing 3.7 yards per pass attempt. 3.7. Just a 60.6 passer rating, uh, sacks per game second, uh, points per game just 13.1, pretty much first or second in every single defensive category against the pass at home this year. Uh, on the road, 21st, 5th, 25th, and 31st. So Cleveland's defense on the road has shown they can be vulnerable to the pass here and there, but at home, no shot. And we all know the Jets' pass protection has been a huge weakness this entire season. I mean, a lot of that is due to the injuries. They've had terrible luck, but I mean, on the season, they're 28th in pressure rate allowed, 27th in QB hit rate allowed, 29th in adjusted sack rate allowed. This is the Browns in Cleveland, man. I mean, one of the best pass rushers in the NFL. Sixth in adjusted sack rate, fourth in pressure rate, second in QB hit rate. Now, I guess one positive talking point for the Jets offense would be we finally saw Brees Hall get it going on the ground last week. 
20 carries for 95 yards, 4.8 yards per carry. Uh, but it's really hard to take that game seriously when you take into account the previous eight. In the eight games leading up to that Washington game last week, the Jets were averaging just 3.15 yards per carry, 60.8 rush yards per game. I mean, the Jets run game was non-existent for eight straight games leading up to that game. And then, I mean, we're talking about at home against Washington. How much, I mean, how seriously can we really take those numbers? And in case you were wondering, Cleveland's defense against the run, also elite. Uh, in fact, they're first in DVOA, first in adjusted line yards. They are back at 12th in yards per carry. Uh, the reason they're up at first in DVOA is they've had kind of a brutal schedule as far as defending the run. Played Baltimore twice, San Francisco. Uh, they played a lot of really strong rushing attacks. That's the reason for that. And just like the pass defense, Cleveland's defense against the run, also much better at home. Uh, at home, they're allowing just 3.7 yards per carry, 87.4 rushing yards per game, uh, which is fifth and sixth in the NFL. On the road, 16th and 17th. Situational stats on this side of the ball. Uh, surprise, surprise, the edge goes to Cleveland's defense. Uh, actually, Cleveland's defense, not that good in the red zone. They're actually 30th. Uh, they're first on third downs, though, but it doesn't matter because the Jets offense dead last in both. But now we flip it over to the other side of the ball. Uh, and obviously, this is where we can finally find some positive points for the Jets here. Um, we know the Jets have been great against the pass all year. Uh, third in pass defense DVOA, third in opponent passer rating allowed, third in yards per pass attempt allowed. But here's the thing. Just like Cleveland's defense, uh, the Jets defense against the pass hasn't been nearly the same on the road. On the season, at home in MetLife, they're second in passer rating, fourth in completion percentage, tied for seventh in takeaways per game. On the road, they're back at 28th, 24th, and 24th. Also, the Jets like to run a lot of man coverage with that elite secondary they have. Joe Flacco has actually been significantly better against man coverage. Uh, on the season, he's just got a 73.8 passer rating against zone, 4.77 net yards per attempt. Uh, you can look at his numbers against man, much better, 94.9 and 7.39 yards per attempt so that's a positive angle for joe flacco there and speaking of joe flacco we got to mention that this dude's been going absolutely nuts i mean since he took over as starting quarterback for the browns four weeks ago he's been one of the most effective passers in the league he's ninth in yards per attempt first in touchdown passes 12th in pff passer grade now that being said if you take a look at some of the deeper metrics uh they indicate that joe flacco's gotten a bit lucky and hasn't been quite as good as the stats show uh, he's just 26th in EPA per play, 23rd in EPA per dropback, 22nd in success rate per dropback. And we do have to take note that the Jets' pass rush has really come alive. They start off the season slow, but Jets' pass rush has been good. I mean, on the year, they're fifth in pressure rate, seventh in QB hurry rate, third in adjusted sack rate, and Joe Flacco hasn't been great when pressured. Amongst 41 qualified quarterbacks this season, he's 27th in yards per attempt, 25th in completion percentage, 27th in turnover-worthy play rate, 36th in passer rating. There are a couple decent marks in there uh fourth in pressure to sack rate so he hasn't been taking sacks he's been getting the ball out 12th in big time throw percentage so he's made some big plays when pressured and seventh in pff passer grade so yeah joe flacco hasn't been terrible under pressure but he's certainly been much better when given a clean pocket now what about the run game because as we know that's the weakness of the jets defense you got to run the ball on this team uh, but you know what the jets run defense has been pretty solid on the season they're sixth in adjusted line yards 13th in dvoa 11th in yards per carry uh, they are 24th in rushing yards per game, though, at 126.2. That could be an indication of how good their pass defense is. The teams have just abandoned it and have been running the ball more against the Jets. It also could be an indication of the Jets have been blown out several times this year where the opponents are just going to run the ball on them with a big lead. But here's the thing. The Cleveland Browns run game without Nick Chubb has been pretty awful. Uh, on the season, they're now 22nd in DVOA, 26 in yards per carry, 27th in adjusted line yards. And keep in mind, they started off the season running the ball well with Chubb. Uh, I mean, it was only a game and a half, but these are season-long numbers. It just shows you how bad it's been since Nick Chubb got hurt. Um, and it gets even worse because in the last three games, they've hit rock bottom. The run game has been non-existent for Cleveland. On uh, the last three, they're averaging just 2.17 yards per carry. 2.17. 55 rushing yards per game that's awful now to be fair the last three cleveland games were against defenses who are much better against the run so maybe they game plan to have joe flacco throw the ball and against the jets a defense that's excellent against the pass and a little more vulnerable to the run maybe they come out with a different game plan but still hard to ignore that the run game's been non-existent for three games situational stats on this side of the ball uh edge definitely goes to the jets defense they're 17th on third down sixth in the red zone uh, Cleveland offensively 29th on third down 15th in the red zone got an underdog pick them here to three picks so it pays out six times this one comes from me not prop either 
I'm going Trevor Simeon lower than a half passing touchdown. Uh, Jerome Ford higher than 46 and a half rushing yards. Riley Patterson higher than one and a half field goals made. Like I said, this is a three pick, so it pays out six times. If you don't have an underdog fantasy account, it's available in any state highlighted in this map. So if you're in one of these states highlighted in yellow, uh, you can head over to the website or download the app Underdog Fantasy. Make sure you use the promo code BET, B-E-T, when you make your account. That'll get you a hundred dollar deposit bonus match uh so you deposit a hundred dollars they will give you a free hundred dollars to play with as far as when i'm betting in this game i i haven't bet it yet but there's no way i'm taking the jets i would need way more than seven and a half to take the jets i would need at least ten and a half to consider it um i i don't like this matchup for the browns offense i think they're gonna struggle but I really could see the Jets being shut out here. I don't know how Trevor Simeon's going to move the ball. I don't know how they're going to score points. So if I'm looking at this game and I'm thinking the Browns only need 13, 17 points to cover this number, I know that sounds crazy, but I think it's very realistic. So give me Cleveland minus seven and a half. I'd lean under, but 34 and a half is a low total. I'd lean that way. Um, I'm also still down to play the Jets team total under all the way down to 13 and a half. Uh, but... I'm not overly in love with this game, so I'll probably just put a solid 0.75 units or something on Cleveland minus seven and a half and call it a day. But that's the way I would lean. I like Cleveland to win the game and the Jets offense to do absolutely nothing. If you want our top bets for all sports parlays of the day, uh, or you want to join our Discord, head over to kylecrims.com. The information is right there on the homepage. Thursday night football, week 17. Five of the last six weeks have been green in the NFL. Let's keep that rolling. Uh, remember to bet responsibly, and I'll talk to you in the Discord.